I wanted to post a follow-up video because a lot of people are asking about different components and stuff like that. I'm much better at describing things in person than listing out a bunch of things, so I may transcribe this later. But uh, here's the newest version of it. You could see I changed out a few things here. Now you can see it's well white down here. That's Azek from Home Depot. So let's get started here. Um, this is a 20 pound CO2 tank, which goes into a manifold. These are, you know, traditional, these are basic CO2 tank lines. So this is all standard stuff. Goes into a quick connect ball valve um, that will go on a keg. This is a full bit sanitizer. This is just like a two and a half gallon corny keg I found with Amazon. Uh, the sanitizer, uh, obviously, I would have put I would put seltzer here, and I've got like just kegs of seltzer, you know, in a, being chilled in here. And hook up the seltzer into another quick disconnect. This one goes out into the machine, and let's take a peek back here. I've got a one-way valve here that's McMaster and I think these all, all these lines are a 3 8 inch out of diameter but they're all quick connect so 3 8 inch OD I have another ball valve here just to turn it on and off at like a uh, at you know before the line if something happens I can turn it off there also the lines go into a T 3 8 inch quick connects again uh, an elbow, a T, an elbow, an elbow, and the same thing repeats on this side. This one comes down and goes to another quick connect. And these solenoids um, need to be cleaned occasionally because stuff will occasionally gum up in there depending on what you're doing. And uh, quick connects into 3 eighths o OD quick connect on this side. On this side, I think it's a quarter inch NTP, NPT connection. Another quick connect to another valve. And then this was, um, since this relies a little bit on gravity, yes, there's pressure, but there's also gravity. So this is an adapter, a uh, 3 eighths, three eighths OD adapter into, I don't remember. Um, but these are stainless steel tubes that I purchased off Amazon. Uh, it's probably six millimeter, if I recall correctly. And so, uh, and there's rubber grommets going around this so it won't get sc scraped. And so um, that's that component. And there's four of those, right? And all four of them are in, 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 um, in parallel here. So there's just two wires coming in and four of them coming out or eight of them coming out here. Then the, this equipment here is all like Home Depot parts, literally just like, you know, threaded rod, um, nuts, washers, lock washers. And then this contraption is, um, you know, just some perforated square tubing. This is the air cylinder. So this is like a 10 inch or 12 inch air cylinder, typically measured in millimeters. The uh, air cylinders obviously are responsible for making this thing go up and down. Uh, I've got one on each side of these long boys because they control the um, the filling head. These are all air cylinders, so they're done based on air pressure from a compressor. And you can, you know, they have adjustables on here so you can adjust them so you can tweak them so they can both go up and down at the same time. Uh, and there's the air valve so, uh, solenoid also. So I can control that with the Arduino. Then, what else? So that's the filling. I'll get to the components in the Arduino box in a second. Just moving over to capping. It's very similar, except instead of moving a square tube up and down, this frame I built, and this holds these uh, air cylinders, which are a shorter stroke. They're only about two inches here. Uh, because that's all I need them to move and they're much strong they're much more powerful I think these are two inch diameter ones so they're quite beefy compared to these little skinny ones here which are only probably like an inch and then with these um, this is the capping component and so I had to match this thread to that capping component which I just bought off apparently some brewing company for $3.99 each 
but yeah, so that's, you know, a lot of this was mating different parts together to make sure I didn't have to figure out how to start doing any welding or brazing or anything like that. Um, and then mating components to all this stuff to make it like a one long line really meant matching components again and making sure I got all the brackets that matched. Um, this is all powered through air. So there's the splitter there. One lead goes into this, um, this pressure gauge, and then one goes into this pressure gauge. And these are all fed by a pancake air compressor that I purchased off Home Depot. Um, these are all done, um, you know, through that, it's all controlled through the solenoid, which all these yellow cables go to the Arduino, which we can get to next. Oh, and the only other thing to note is this is Azek. This is just two sheets of Azek. It bends, and so it's more flexible than the plywood, but the plywood that I was using before is porous, and so I was really worried about just leaving something wet on it for too long. But when you hit this with, I think that each one of these puts out um, probably around 150 pounds, probably more actually. Um, so that's 600 pounds of pressure right there going down on four bottles. This whole thing would just bend up like zoop, like that. So I have to actually use clamps to clamp it down to the, to the bench so it doesn't bend the whole thing up. All right, and that's the air compressor lines. That's the liquid lines. And I think that's about it. So CO2 pressurized, but at the same time controlled, obviously through Arduino in the in these solenoids. Um, inside this box is uh, the this case. I already posted a link to this case, but it's just a simple case I got off Amazon that I cut out a hole and I popped the next gen in. And the next gen has a bezel on it. The one I got anyways has a bezel on it, and so it covers any potential mistakes you make in the cutout. These grommets or wire grips, I don't know, they're from McMaster. Again, these are all fitted based on the wire size here. A couple more. So I get a 12 volt, um, a 12 volt power supply. It's like 10 amps, I figure I get a beefy one. And then this is just a, a simple power supply for the Arduino, which is five volts. Capping side, filling side, filling lines. Um, which drops the air cylinder. Oh, I'm sorry. A uh, lowering line, which which brings uses the air cylinders to bring everything down. The purging line, which activates a CO2 purge solenoid, which is not connected right now. And then the filling lines, which does um, these solenoids here. And that line is activated. So in the box, prepare yourself for disaster. So here you go. This is what it looks like actually inside. I have these bus bars to be able to um, distribute the ground and the five volt line. And actually that's the 12 volt line. And then that's the, the five volt uh, ground and line as well. And so you can see there's a relay down here, five volt to 12 volt re relay, pretty standard stuff. This is all stuff on Amazon. Um, I sold out a bunch of stuff. On, I soldered uh, the Pro Micro onto this chip set and then made some header pins and so I could just link directly into things. Uh, and then I had to expand all the IO ports and so these are just a chain of IO port extensions. Um, and then everything else is hooked up directly to it. So, and I powered this through USB. So I have the, um, the 120 volt AC adapter goes into a USB switch and the USB switch then goes into the next gen provides you with this little piece here, but it basically, I would imagine it's just a, it just has a little regulator on it, but you plug it in with micro USB and then one side goes to the next gen and one side goes to the Arduino board. What else? I think that's about it. And you know, this was my first Arduino project and I figured that I just needed to, I had a very clear goal of what I needed to do, but no obvious way to get there. And so piece by piece, I just put it together and eventually we kind of came up with this monstrosity. Oh, and then these, these, um, these are pretty cool here too. Uh, just used a hole saw, poked out holes because my bottle size, I won't show you the brand name, 
but the bottle size is a stubby bottle, so I had to make it a little bit wider to fit those holes. But they sli the tray slide right, right along. It's a pretty neat system. And I've got these little stoppers at the end to know when you're supposed to, um, when it's lined up correctly. Hope that's helpful. Thank you.